So there never, it is. <laughs> never knowing exactly when we actually appear on on the stream over there. I'm just going to say uh, to the YouTube audience, uh, welcome to another afternoon of the Virtual Pipe Club. If this is your first time watching, um, welcome. Um, although we're kind of going to be engaged in our own conversations, don't uh, forget that you can also be a part of it even on YouTube by typing in some questions I, or comments or hellos and whatever you want to do that. Because um, sometimes it's not always easy to get into the Zoom room and YouTube is easier. Also on YouTube, you can watch this in the future. So uh, that's another advantage of this. So welcome to the Saturday June 6th edition of the Virtual Pipe Club, where today we have a very, very, very special guest whom I will introduce in a moment. I see him, he's, he's here already. And um, I'm sure a lot of you guys know him already, but uh, I'm gonna do my best to give him a decent intro and then um, get started. In the meantime, what are you guys all smoking? Uh, we like to maybe do this a little bit, uh, talk about what you have in your hand today and, and what you've got in the pipe, except for Dimitri. Well, uh, is... actually, uh, this is uh, uh, Toscano Garibaldi, uh, Italian uh, cigar, Italian cherut, which is technically made with a pipe tobacco. This is dark fired Kentucky. Uh, Toscano cigar has been made in Italy since commercially made in Italy since 1818. That's older than pretty much any premium cigar company in existence. Uh, some uh, Italian guys managed to uh, bring uh, uh, Kentucky Burley seeds to Italy, uh, planted it there. And uh, when uh, tobacco was drying, uh, it was rain for a very long time. All tobacco got wet. So uh, then they decided, uh, let's try to dry it in the sun. And tobacco started fermenting. Smell was horrible. Then they decided to force drying that uh, tobacco by uh, building the fires around it. Uh, and uh, uh, so basically, uh, that's... Uh, fermented dark fired Kentucky uh, tobacco uh, grown in Italy. And uh, well, uh, they uh, had a uh, thought just to throw it away, but uh, Grand Duke of Tuscany wouldn't be happy about it, so they decided to try make cigars out of it. They rolled it into cigars and they liked it. And Grand Duke of Tuscany liked it. And uh, since then, uh, uh, Toscanos uh, became a trademark of Italy. Uh, many famous people were smoking Toscano cigars. Um, actually, Clint Eastwood, uh, you know, he appeared in a few uh, spaghetti westerns. And uh, when he first time saw Toscano cigar, which is like rustic looking cherut, he said, I'm not smoking that thing. Director said, if you want to be in my movie, you will smoke it. <laughs> hey, Actually, well, Garibaldi great choice. After, yeah, Garibaldi, after whom this cigar was uh, named, was a uh, Toscano smoker himself. Uh, one time I was uh, watching on YouTube some old Italian movies. There was an uh, Italian movie from 1980s with Adriano Celentano, where he's playing lawyer. I know Celentano as a lawyer, that's already funny. So there is a scene in that movie, he's flying from New York to Italy, and uh, back then you could smoke on the airplane, so he takes out Toscano and lights it up on the airplane. <laughs> awesome. That's a great yeah. bit of history. You know, when it passed my, my mind when you said um, that Toscano has been in business since um, 1818, the Clint Eastwood movie was exactly what went through my mind. Like that would yeah, be. And actually, you see, I even have an <clears throat> anniversary edition Toscano lighter. 200. <laughs> Dude, you're so set up. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, and I have my pipes ready. Today, I have a few Nat Sherman pipes with me. 
Well, to the best of my knowledge, I have second largest collection of Nat Sherman pipes. I have 26 of them. The yeah. only person uh, I know who have more Nat Sherman pipes is Larry Sherman, grandson of Nat Sherman. So I, I think that's because you live at Nat Sherman's. Yeah, it's my home away from home. So I have this one. It's, uh, you see, a beautiful uh, paneled bowl uh, made in France. Uh, that's early 1990s. I have uh, this one. Well, uh, those who are familiar with alpha pipes can recognize uh, the shape and style. This was made by Shalom Pipe Factory in Israel, 1991. In the US, uh, Shalom uh, pipes were sold as alpha pipes. Then I have this very interesting, very unusual looking pipe. Uh, that's uh, from 1980s. It has address 711 Fifth Avenue. So I can uh, confidently say it was made between 1976 and 1990. Uh, this one, those familiar with the uh, Savinelli pipes can easily recognize it as Savinelli. It was made by Savinelli for Nat Sherman. And I have this beautiful Danish style freehand, also made in Italy by Savinelli. That's uh, 1989 or 1990. Wow. And I'm smoking Nat Sherman tobacco, Nat Sherman 536. And this one's been aged for about 10 years. That's uh, American English blend. Fantastic. Cool. What else? Who else is uh, smoking something interesting today? Glenn, what have you got going on? Yeah, okay, I'm pairing uh, all this uh, with this uh, uh, Diplomatico uh, uh, Montano rum. It's not as sweet as uh, Zacap or Diplomatic Reserve Exclusive, but sweeter than like Florida Canyon or Barcelona. Well, hold on to that rum because we're going to do a toast here uh, to get things started <laughs> today. Yeah. Oh, I have enough. I still have enough. You know, no, no. Okay, so hold, hold on. Yeah. Um, I want to ask a question but before Glenn. I, I, I ask Glenn to share something because he's always got something really interesting. But um, I always look at your name, Goshovi. Is it? Is that, am I pronouncing that right? Is that, you? I got your, your mic off, so I got to get you to put your mic back on. You can call me David if you like, but uh, I know there were other David, so just to change. Okay, that's cool. I just, I, having an unusual name myself, I'm always really like respectful of other people's names and I want to make sure I get it right. So um, yeah, David, hold on to that for a second. So I'm, I'm going to, just because I asked him, uh, let Glenn do that and then, Pop on in there, brother, because I know you got something good. <laughs> um, yeah, Glenn, do, you're going to have to turn your own mic on, though. There yeah. we go. This is uh, Dan Tobacco's uh, Christmas Tobacco, Vinox Tobacco, from 2001. Ooh. So it's wow, uh, beautiful. 19 years old and fresh in the tin. Sounds good. Did you break that open just for us today? No, I, I had opened it earlier. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you smoking it in? This is a, um, let's see, I've got a bunch of them. This is a, uh, an old K Woody. Um, oh, I guess it would be a Lovat. Uh, it's a K Woody Supreme Lovat. N nice old pipe in beautiful condition. Good grain, smokes great. Beautiful. All right, um, David. Uh, love to see what you're smoking there, brother. You have to. Uh, you, everybody, everybody knows this one. Oh yeah, the gold one. I heard about that blend. That's good. Wow. It's just a vapor with a little touch of burly, but it has like long flakes like white ones, I'm going to say 10, 10, 15 inches long. And what pipe are you smoking? Yes, I, Hans Christian Andersen. Beautiful. Nice. Nice. Is that a church one? So, so, hey. Yeah. Let me get any other one. Another one I may have for later. Actually, all, all Andersen's uh, church wagon. 
Oh, wow. Uh, and uh, there are about uh, nine or uh, between nine or dozen. Uh, I know nine of them. Just send us off all the all the um, the the branded Hans Christian Andersen are church wardens. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Ah. Um. Nice. So we're so we're starting to uh, pull up here, I, and I, I will uh, get keep our uh, our uh, speaker just hanging out in the wings there too much longer. So let's do one or two more. If you want, and uh, and then I'm gonna do a a toast real quick, and then I'm gonna introduce our speaker. So yes, yeah, Stanislav, go ahead, man. I, you, what are you smoking there? I'm sorry. Uh, actually, some of uh, Andersons are double turns. Uh, they have a uh, uh, church warden uh, uh, for, uh, shape, and uh, they have a short shape for for walking out. For so you just turn. interchange the stem. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, I've been indoors today, so I, I, unfortunately I can't join you guys, but I've got a um, about a gram of the HH uh, Acadian Perique ready to go in my uh, Jamestown clay. I've been going through the whole nice clay pipe McBaron line this week in preparation for this. My some of my favorite tobaccos. I, uh, I'll do. I'll do mine here because I picked mine today in honor of our guest speaker. So I'm actually smoking in a Jorgensen pipe. Wow. And, um, and doing some uh, Pure Virginia for, for today's smoke. Dude, that sounds good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Expect a review on this one soon. I'm just, it's oh, coming. okay. I'll be looking for that. <laughs> I'm going to be looking. He gives good reviews, y'all. Very good. I only you. promise that they're not boring. I don't promise that they're good at all. <laughs> um, John, man, that's... It's a, it's a Meerschaum from the company Black Meerschaum. I was talking with uh, Bart uh, the other day about this one. I saw this from uh, the Bremen pipe smoker. He did a review on it. It has a, it, it has a briar inlay in the tenon area. It's, it's a push-pull uh, stem. So I'm smoking a little modern mixture, a little modern mixture in there, Baron's modern mixture. And then I also have, also have my uh, tempers that I got, I received from Bart. Yeah, those are. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Like, um, be careful not to like drop that tamper on some on your foot because yeah. you'll crack it. Yeah, that's, a, that's a that's a hefty thing. For those of you who who haven't met him yet, um, Bart's one of our founding members, and he's a blacksmith, and he's made. I've got one here actually. Also, um, these things are hefty. They're they're like massive um, little piece of iron work. It does a wonderful job, very beautiful, but uh, they're deadly. Lower is the pipe of burning hair from Belgium. It leaves the light of Rostica. In my mind. Boris, what are, you, what are you smoking it in? I missed that part. Rostica. But what, what's the pipe? Rostica. Uh, something in the uh, one, two, two uh, uh, KS. Gotcha. Nice. Gentlemen, if you have a beverage with you, um, let me ask you to uh, grab it. Um, one of the, our members reminded me that today is the 75th, 76th anniversary of D-Day. Oh, wow. And that um, in the midst of everything that's going on here, we should not forget that um, men and women have given their lives for their countries, for their fellow soldiers, Mm -hmm. um, for the beliefs that they hold dear. And that's a, an important moment in history. And I'd just like to honor the suggestion. Phil was the one who wrote to me. And Phil, thank you for the reminder. So as a veteran myself, I want to say we miss you that you didn't come home. And we're glad to keep your spirits alive. Salute. 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 Cheers. Salute, cheers. Yeah, thanks, Bill. Um, 
it is my distinct pleasure and personal, it's all, you know, cause guys, remember, it's all about me. Um, <laughs> my own personal um, delight to have connected with this gentleman and uh, somebody that I watched on YouTube and followed as, as much as I could uh, pick from his vast knowledge just in uh, online. Uh, and now to have him here as our guest speaker. Um, and Per, you're gonna have to forgive me if I butcher your name and maybe correct me. Per Georg Jensen, who is- Are, are you Danish? I am not Danish. I am just uh, doing my best. <laughs> that, that, that was a great job. Was that a good job? <laughs> yeah, great job. So uh, he is the uh, product manager at McBaron Tobacco Company and also the master blender. And he also a, um, grow, grew up in a, in a pipe making uh, family. And um, if we can um, sort of cajole him into telling us a bit about that story today, and then um, remember, by the way, for those of you who are new, all I try to do is just kind of keep things rolling, but I am not the only person to speak here. You guys are encouraged to ask questions and, you know, it's a, it's a club that belongs to all of us. So um, right. I want to make sure that, that you know that you are welcome to uh, ask a pair as many questions as you like as well. All right. A couple of different ways. Sure. If if you're um, want to on uh, Zoom here, one of the things that you can do is go over to Pear's little um, little square there where his camera is, and hovering over it with your mouse, you'll be able to see a little three dot menu. And under that dot three dot menu is something that says pin video. If you click that, then his face pops up large. And you can watch him specifically because it's not my face you came to see today. And then if you want to come back and watch the rest of the group, you go up into the upper right-hand corner of your screen and click gallery view. And it'll come back to everybody's picture again. That's if you're on a laptop or desktop. If you're on a mobile device, I know a lot of you guys are on your phones or tablets or whatever, um, you can get to different views with a finger swipe. So you can just swipe left or right and you'll see more or fewer individuals um, okay. to, um, to watch. And so you can swipe it so it's just pairs, uh, pairs view that you see. And that's all the nerd science I'm gonna give today. And I am going to say once again, Pear, welcome. It's really nice to, uh, to have you here and thanks for coming. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure, David. Um, it, I, I heard the word guest speaker. Uh, I prefer to do it another way. Okay. Um, and, and ask the question, what do you like to hear about? So everybody can join in with a question or a subject. And, um, well, I'll do it to my best ability to, to give a correct answer. Hmm. I'll start off with just one. And then you guys pop in and and just uh, shout in a question. First come, first serve, more or less. Um, I'm curious about your your youth. So you grew up in a family where your father was already a pipe maker, uh, and your mother also. Uh, both uh, mom and mom and dad ran the business. Yeah, sure, sure. My mother was uh, was was part of it, and actually, I didn't grow up in a pipe making family. I grew up at a pipe factory. Ah. So, so um, if I want to see my, my mom and dad, I had to go to the factory. And, and my father was a very clever guy. So uh, he quickly found out that he could get some, some work out of me. So um, I, st I started, I think, uh, age seven or something like that, doing uh, very simple jobs, like sweeping the floor and, and, and things where I couldn't hurt anybody or, or get hurt myself. And then, then later on, um, I, I came into the production, one production step at a time. And, and that was actually, that, that was funny. Um, I don't know if any of you have, have tried to, uh, to make a pipe, but, but to, to grab a piece of briar wood and, and see if you can find out what the soul is and then try to release that soul. Um, 
that's that's tremendous. And and even we we made around about forty thousand pipes a year, wow. uh, and and still um, one or two pieces, uh, one or two pipes a year, astonished us because grain uh, everything was just perfect, but it was not more than than one or two. The rest was beautiful as well, of course, but uh, those two were fantastic. They were unique. So that was a little bit about my, my background. And, I, and I, okay, I, perhaps I should say I, I stayed in, um, in the pipe making business until I was 42, uh, then changed to, uh, to the McBurn Tobacco Company as uh, a product specialist and slowly involved into uh, product development. And then that is where the fun is. Starting out with something, uh, just an idea. Can we do this? Uh, for instance, the Rustica, uh, that was a hard job because it was tobaccos we didn't know. We, we knew the, the dark fired Virginia, we knew from, from a fine cut, but Rustica in pipe tobacco, we have never tried it. And that was just learning by doing. Or we were making the street as we drove along at the same time. So, um, yeah. That, that was uh, perhaps the biggest challenge I have had uh, with making pipe tobacco. That was uh, the Rustica. But okay, she came out and she behaved herself. Um, I fear that there are some pipe smokers uh, that are getting a little bit heartbeat when, uh, when they smoke it, but uh, otherwise she behaves fine. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, gentlemen, do you have any questions? Yeah, sure. Gareth, go ahead and just um, toss it out there. I, I have one. Uh, I, uh, the first, uh, this is Steve. Uh, the first pipe tobacco I found that I enjoyed was uh, McBaron's Royal Twist. It's no longer made. What's the closest thing to Royal Twist, and do you think you'll ever bring it back in its original form? Oh, I, I can tell you we will not bring it back because it is already there. We had problems in the United States with uh, the registration Royal Twist. So we have to uh, denounce on the name and give it a new name. And today you will find it under the name Roll Cake. And it's, it's the same tobacco, okay. same recipe. Okay, thank uh, you very much. Okay, uh, Per George, uh, I'm Stanislav Patavkin, or just Stan, uh, if you like it. Uh, I was a uh, McBaron uh, tobacco member, club member for, since the uh, 90s. And I remember yep. that paper magazines and uh, the tasters uh, and uh, some small packs uh, with uh, uh, test uh, samples uh, when uh, I received from your company several times. And I'm gladly uh, happy. And I, I, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad they're grateful for it. But uh, what yep. happened now uh, with uh, this uh, club? Well, I know that I, can uh, I know that uh, the magazine is suspended. Somehow, I would like to know uh, what's going on in company and uh, what's uh, going on with uh, your mixtures. Uh, I know that. Uh, the original choice, the famous original choice, was uh, discovered, was mixed uh, according uh, uh, the club uh, members' uh, mm, wishes oh, well. and, uh, and so on. So, uh, the what's in the future? What, what, what's going on now uh, with this uh, club and the magazine and uh, what we have? What we will have in the future? Now I'm going to tell you something and you'll believe I'm crazy because the 1st of January, 2007, we got a new law in Denmark. The law against advertising for tobacco. Um, and this law prohibits me to talk about um, blends, names. I can talk about a blend, uh, what we have uh, mixed in, Virginia, Burley, and so on, but I'm not allowed to tell the name of the tobacco. 
those of you who um, follow me on YouTube, of, um, if you have seen the video Nicotiana Rustica, I don't mention the blend because I'm not allowed to do it. It's a Danish law. Um, and that also meant that 1st of January 2007, we have to, um, to close the club. We are not allowed to talk to pipe smokers uh, or consumers in, in general about tobacco. Everything about tobacco is okay, but, but specific blend, tastes, uh, how they smell, uh, that's forbidden for us. So um, if you can imagine, I'm, I'm looking very much, much forward to, to retire, to be a private person. Then I can start all this fuss. So that, that was what happened to, uh, to the club. And I, I, I would love to, to, to make something um, on the internet, for instance, to make a, a pipe club, pipe smoking club. But I'm not allowed to do it. It's, it's forbidden for me. Well, you are um, hereby appointed as a uh, official um, member of the virtual pipe club, and you can do whatever you want here. Okay, <laughs> and I, I will do it. Well, it is in my spare time. But <laughs> if I had to follow, if I had to follow the law to to uh, to the letter, it would be forbidden. To to have a general talk, that that's okay. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Paul. Uh, I will uh, ask another short question. Uh, uh, do you know? Uh, maybe you. Maybe you don't. That uh, McBaron in Russia is quite lim uh, has a quite limited presence for for now. Uh, for example, we have no dark twist, we have no roll cake, we have no cans actually at all. We have HH, we have uh, sometimes. We have uh, pure Virginia, we have some flakes from you, but uh, I didn't see the roll cuts uh, for years. Uh, dozen, is, dozen or some. So, uh, is there any plan? Uh, uh, is there any intention to bring it mm. back uh, for our market. You have to remember, you, you're talking to the guy in McBaron who would love to have all tobaccos on all markets. Um, and then come my colleagues, they're, they're the boring guys, uh, our export salesmen. And they have to fix the program so it's, it's, um, it's doable uh, financially. And it's also doable for our importers. And, and that, that is the reason why in a lot of countries, uh, there are a lot of tobaccos you are missing. Uh, it's not because we don't want to, but, but it's just because it's not possible. It, it could also be something with uh, local legislation. Uh, like in the United States, you have the FDA coming down that would make limits to, to uh, new blends. They would make a more or less stop to it. Uh, but the blends you have so far, they should be uh, be able to continue. Uh, Russia also have something you are starting now with something very boring called track and trace. I don't know if you know what track and trace is. Probably not. It's a small code that we have to print on all tobacco with an individual number, like a license plate. So if the authorities buy a tin of tobacco, they can follow it back to us. Who was it sold to? Who was it imported to? Who made it? Uh, we are doing that Europe-wide for fine cut right now. And I can tell you, it's a hell. The legislation here is much harder than for the pharmaceutical industries. They also have track and trace, but not as serious as we have. So, so um, that, that could also be um, a stop for, for new blends to, to our country. So they're, they're really trying to, uh, to get hold of us. Okay, I see. Thank you. However, I uh, order the tobacco from uh, uh, Germany and one of my friends was, uh, is now uh, is uh, practically a mule who is going here <laughs> and, come, and uh, come to me with several cans of uh, dark twist, for example. And I will pick it back. <laughs> yeah, 
And I, I always say the, the more restrictions they made on, on tobacco products, uh, the more people will fight it and resist. Um, if you think back to the 30s with the, with the alcohol ban in, in the United States, I think the statistic shows there have never been drunken so much alcohol than in those times. Yeah, between uh, 1920 and 1933, during the prohibition, Americans drank more than ever before or ever after. <laughs> yep, exactly. And, and, and that, actually, is, that is what will happen. Actually, uh, the um, 1920s, uh, whiskey was cheaper than milk, and I think eggs, so it saw an uprise in the drinking as well. Yeah, well, that, that's not the, the, the case today. Yep. Can I, uh, Per, can I give you an older example? In 1746, the Dress Act uh, in Parliament in the UK banned the wearing of the kilt in Scotland, and that didn't work either. No. <laughs> so there's it's, always there's always they, a way, there's always a way around these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 like water running down a hill. It always finds the most easiest way to come down, and so it is with people as well. I'm just, I would like to. Text text I'm just imagining that in Scotland, if they made a law like that, then the the men would just say, "It's kilt or nothing. Take your pick." <laughs> <laughs> I would like to add something else. Uh, I'm somewhat familiar with the nicotine rustica. It has amazing flavor, but uh, it has very high nicotine content, uh, like uh, up to nine percent nicotine in the leaf versus nicotine tobacco, which has between 1% and 3% of nicotine. So I can really see the challenge. Uh, I actually, I smoke nicotine rustica straight, and uh, I love the flavor, but yes, it is very strong tobacco, and I can see that it's really hard to make balanced blend using nicotine rustica. Yeah, and then that and, was uh, exactly the challenge. Yeah, and also I want to add uh, that uh, since uh, your company acquired Amphora, I finally found yeah. Amphora that I can enjoy. That Amphora Virginia, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It, it's a it's a good it's a good uh, rabbit flake. I use it uh, as uh, as a main tobacco for my for my own mixes when I do it. Yeah. Uh, uh, talking about amphora blends, um, you have to imagine we, we took over from Imperial Tobacco Group. And, and to say it very mildly, they were not pipe tobacco lovers. I, th I think the guy who lost uh, the battle in the office um, was given pipe tobacco. You can do that. And the others took the cigarettes. Uh, and finally, in 2015, it came to... Um, a pipe tobacco loving company and and um, i immediately started uh, developing and i think uh, the virginia was the first and and now we have um, for virginia we have the burley we have the kentucky and we have the english we have four news so i'm glad you like it harry Jensen, this is todd uh, it's a real treat to have you here. David, this is great. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I, long list of questions. I'm going to keep it to two. I'm relatively new to pipe smoking, uh, 2013. You've been in the industry all your life, and I don't like to call it an industry because in this country, America, everybody conflates that with big tobacco. Uh, but you've been at McBaron since 2001. What have you seen in terms of demand uh, for pipe tobacco since 2001 or even over the last six, seven years? Well, the pipe tobacco market each year is a bit declining. Um, but it, it doesn't have anything to do with that people don't smoke anymore. But you have to remember all these smoking bans have been introduced. In former times, you smoked in the train to your job. You could smoke at your job. Uh, nowadays, you can smoke when you get home or if you're sitting in your own car. But otherwise, it's a smoking ban, meaning people are smoking less balls a day. And, and my, just my, my small unofficial uh, statistic, during the corona, we have seen a growth in tobacco sales because people have been at home, they have the possibility to smoke. 
So, but but um, year to year we we see a, a small decline. I, I can relate to that. My my, my wife has banned me from smoking in the house as well. Uh, but you know, I'm I'm lucky to smoke maybe um, 15 grams of product a week. You know, less than a kilo a year. Uh, and with, you know, a hundred pounds of tobacco, that's like 50 years of, of smoking for me. But I, I was just in terms of popularity, I was wondering, you know, if, if they were, you know, getting any traction uh, in, in for sales. Sure. For sure. Uh, you have a very big interest uh, about pipes and pipe tobacco. Uh, sometimes uh, I would say it's, it's um, getting out of hand when, when people are, are start talking about what, what we all have put into the tobacco. And I'm sitting back there and say, well, I didn't put any leather in there. Uh, that's for sure, but, but people can taste it. Uh, but we have a lot of new pipe smokers. Um, and I, I welcome that. Uh, if you think back to, to the Jamestown settlement where, where pipe tobacco was introduced uh, up to the 1960s, where almost everybody smoked a pipe was very mandy to, to, to have a pipe, to smoke a pipe. And then came a decline in the 70s and 80s, where all these smoking bands started um, having influence, uh, the image of the pipe smoker. Well, that's the grandpa's and, and, and I don't want to look like my father, so I don't smoke a pipe. Mm -hmm. Now we are a generation further and now um, the young people come and say, well, I remember my grandfather, he smoked a pipe and it always smelled so good. I want to, to try that. So we are getting a lot of new pipe smokers, not heavy pipe smokers, but uh, what I would call pleasure pipe smokers. We're just doing it for the pleasure because it tastes good. Not you know, because, I'll... sorry. No. Uh, well, no, I'll, 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 I'll sneak in one last question and then I'll, I'll, I'll listen. Um, Syrian Latakia, is that gone forever? Is that extinct now? That is gone forever. Yeah. Unless you find a warehouse where they have something in, in, in a corner building, uh, otherwise it's gone. It was yeah. once upon a time. And I want to yeah. add to that. Actually, Syrian, uh, Syrian Lataki was disappearing even before all those political yeah. problems. Just because it's a very labor-intensive process and uh, people making it, they are not making any money. That's why there was uh, less and less of Syrian Lataki. And then there was a restriction in the United States on sale of Syrian tobacco. That's when McClellan stopped making any blends with the Syrian Latake, and now it's pretty much extinct. Yeah, I, I think it was delisted in 2006. That was the last harvest, what came out of Syria. And since then, nothing came out. Yeah, I'm lucky and, and enough. I would... Yeah, I have uh, actually about 10 teams of different blends with Syrian Latake, like McClellan Rose of Latake, and uh, that's amazing. <laughs> you have to say you have to save those for, for a special occasion. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 one of a kind. Exactly. So I, I, I have... want to um, jump in real quick here, just um, to for a technical thing, a, a Zoom thing. <clears throat> You'll notice that I've uh, gone around and muted everybody, um, and that's only because um, sometimes if we get ambient sound, even like the Dimitri's birds in the background or whatever, it'll take over the, um, the, the video. And um, so I just do that to keep it simple, but please no, you can turn your mics on anytime. Don't be shy guys about asking questions. Um, and another way that you can turn your mics on if you don't already know this, is those of you who are on a laptop or desktop, you can simply hold down your space bar, kind of like a walkie talkie. And by holding down the space bar, your mic comes back on and you can just chat, chat away. Um, so just wanna make sure everybody knows that and uh, are able to not take it as though I'm trying to mute you, except Todd, you know, I, I just, cause he's obnoxious and I just, uh, 
Um, so yes, if they yes. delisted it in 2006, and I'm just curious because I've got seven tins of your um, uh, vintage Syrian uh, left. Uh, how did you, where did you guys have, you just had a bunch stored in the warehouse somewhere? Uh, well, it has a very logical explanation because our owner, Henrik Halberg, is also the buyer of our raw tobacco leaf. So when he sniffed out, this is going to be the last batch. He bought everything he could. Put out the words to all our um, places where we buy our raw tobacco, saying if you have any Syrian Latakia, we take it. So we were able to make our vintage uh, Syrian until 2017. And then we have used the last one. So if you don't have a tin, it's gone forever. Wow. Now I'll take it, I'll take it a little different just from a personal perspective, somebody who's made pipes as well as who blends tobaccos. On a personal level, do you consider yourself more of a, a pipe guy or a tobacco guy? And why is that? Mm. And that's a tough question. Um, I love making pipes because you could be creative, you could make new designs, you could try to find out the grain in the pipes. Um, and I missed that a little bit uh, by McBurn when I started, because uh, the first job, uh, my first job at McBurn was educating tobacco news, sales forces and so on in tobacco. Uh, so I sneaked myself into the product development department and 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 start i think over the first one and a half year uh i managed to, to make the first blend and that was actually that was the vintage syrian um and at that time our our export man um or, or boss needed something new and nobody had anything and i from from the back row said well i have one one shot here it could be something and and it was something and then I was never appointed, but I just flew into um, uh, the product development group. And that was where I could use my creativity. If you knew what I have developed, where people are thinking, are he crazy? Because it doesn't taste any good. Um, but on the other hand, uh, I learned it down the line and, and um, know how to, to walk around it. So that's, again, why I was very happy for, for the Rustica, because that was a challenge. We have never tried it. Nobody has tried it. Yeah, well, the last one was probably 400 years ago. But uh, that, that was really a challenge. So if you, as you compare those two, I would say it, it's two part of my, my adult life. The first part was with pipes, second part with pipe tobacco. And, and I'm, I'm happy where I am today. So do you, do you still collect a lot of different pipes and a lot of different tobaccos or you go one way or another today? Uh, I, I have to say I have a lot of pipes uh, from, from my former times. So I'm in no need of, of buying something. But I don't, I don't know if, if you can see this. I saw that. I saw what you were smoking in today. Yeah, and that that's, that is one pipe I... I just have to have it. Uh, it's yeah, an L time. Higher, I think some of the, of the yeah. new, yeah. You guys remember Something this? like this, yeah. It's a, this is carbon fiber, so it can't break. We have a briar ball and, and a small mouthpiece. I just have to have it. I never made anything like this, so I have to have it. But otherwise I have pipes enough and uh, pipes enough and too little time to smoke them. I know exactly the feeling. I don't need any new pipes, but sometimes I just see pipes that I cannot resist. I just feel like this yeah. pipe is made for me. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 my name on it. Yeah, I, I know what I know what you mean. Hmm? We had Tom on here a few weeks ago as uh, one of our guest uh, speakers, and I, after listening to him and watching him sort of show off some of the work in progress, I had to go out and get one. It had my name on it. Yep. 
No, no, Tom is, is, um, Tom is making um, extraordinary pipes. And, and the shapes he's doing, um, you can have free hands in all kinds of styles. But Tom's freehand pipes, uh, for my personal taste, is just, um, it's just hit on. So, um, and he's a very good craftsman. And that is what I'm looking very much into when I look at pipes. That is, how are they crafted? Is it just uh, something that has to be done in a, a very short time? Or has the ind individual taken the time to make all the small details? Like for instance, um, I don't know if you, if you see this. Here you have the shank. And if you look at the beginning, it's thicker and then it gets thin. That is not what I would call, um, it's, it's not craftsman correct. It should have been one line. And that is where Tom is, is extremely good. He don't send anything out Otherwise, then it's perfect. So, and I always meet Tom in, in um, at least in, in Chicago. Well, not this year, but, but normally in Chicago, uh, we have a couple of beers and we discuss uh, all kind of things. Pipes, tobacco, uh, whatever. His yeah, rusticated... Course. His yeah. rusticated poker, one of my favorites, it, 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 just a smoking machine. And I had the the end of the stem near the button came off, which I don't know why. I, I don't clinch. The, the button never touches my teeth. It just fell apart. And I haven't been able to find where to get it fixed. It's too bad. Oh, you but, have to give, you have to give, uh, give Tom and, uh, a hunk. And, and say, well, this is what happened to, to one of your pipes, and I'm sure he'll fix it for you. That that is what 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 I would do, because he makes sure that it's okay when he sends it out, and there could be uh, some fault in in the mouthpiece. You 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 never know. There, I um, just want to make sure that we don't leave out some of the guys who are watching over there on um, YouTube. Um, nobody's really come up with a question quite yet, but uh, a lot of guys are um, saying that they're big fans of yours and that they're really excited that you're uh, here to, to chat, you know, answer questions and chat one up. But um, so I wanted to let the guys on YouTube know that we are paying attention to you and I'm passing this along to the pair. Yeah, and, and hi all you guys on YouTube. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't follow bo both Zoom and, and, and YouTube. I could probably, but then you'll have uh, sound interference. <laughs> but um, very welcome. Uh, I just, uh, I'm, I'm new to this, David. You have to excuse me. Um, I, I see I have some, uh, some messages. And now I have been looking into it. Um, the name for, for um, the Royal Twist, the name is Roll Cake with big letters, roll cake. It's just, I had a message here, uh, just to make it, it sure. Okay, what else, what do I have uh, for questions? I have hey, a question have about changing tastes over time. Um, there are a number of tobaccos that you've removed from the product line. Uh, unfortunately, some of them were my favorites of, <laughs> of their sort. Um, Norwood is gone. I liked Stockton of all the roll cakes. Stockton was actually my favorite. Um, and uh, you had uh, uh, London Burley blend removed. Uh, and I, I understood that it was last sold in the United States and Germany and that it was discontinued. And then there was another run of it that you did. Obviously, you had enough people asking for it that, that you did that. Uh, most of the things that you're doing now are, are not in the aromatic realm like you did for a while with Cube and some of the other high-end aromatics, but they're in the more traditional end and hot pressing and that kind of thing. Is this because of the shift in tastes of the pipe smoking community? Sorry, I, I missed the, the, the last. I missed the, the last you were saying. Um, is the change in the product line driven by? 
changes in tastes of the pipe smoking community? Are you responding to feedback that you're getting from people uh, by getting rid of some of the older blends? And some of these that I liked were actually from the 50s. I'm from the 50s, for that matter. Uh, me, me too. <laughs> no, um, what, what we have been doing, uh, that is, we have been trying to figure out what is the next the politician will do. Um, and if we are looking at the cigarettes, the next thing they will do is make a flavor pan. I don't know if you can imagine pipe tobacco with no added flavor. Uh, they don't know what pipe smoking is, but nevertheless. Uh, so what I did was to get in line with a line of flavorless or tobaccos without added flavors. So they were already on the market if that ban came. And you have to remember, we are talking about politicians here and they are, you can calculate with them. You don't know what they're doing. It could come tomorrow. It could come in, in 20 years. It, perhaps it never comes, but it doesn't matter. We are in, in line with that now. Uh, what I'm working on right now, that is what I call the third generation casing. And that is a casing that will give the tobacco um, a sweet tone already with the casing. And then we can add top flavor on top of that. So um, what, what I'm working with right now, uh, that is uh, more sweet tobaccos. So, and what you said with, with that, we have, um, we have delisted uh, the Stockton, uh, the Burley London blend and so on. Um, that is unfortunately, um, one of the challenges of being in, in a company of our size. At a certain time, you have to, to pull the handle and say, well, that was it. But then I, I tried to make these uh, limited runs. It was Burley London Blend next time. Um, it will, within half a year, we will have the Stockton as, uh, as a limited run. Um, because we can make it once, but but to keep producing it, to keep it on the shelf, with the with the little sales that that it actually had, unfortunately there have to be some financial um, interference with um, making tobacco. How big are those limited runs up there? How how many tins do you produce typically? Uh, three thousand tins. Only three thousand. Yeah, we, we did that with the uh, Burley London blend, and I think uh, they were sold out within three days. Yeah, I, I bought a number of those. <laughs> very good, cool. very good. I'll, I'll yeah. be watching for Stockton uh, as well then. Does this mean my wife can delist me too, since I'm from the 50s? <laughs> well, I will, I will reject that. <laughs> don't, 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 don't be delisted. We, we, we are not only uh, getting a little bit older, we are also getting a little bit wiser. So we should uh, be able to uh, to fight that. I should probably already know this. I, sh I should have looked. H how many tins of the Rustica did you guys produce? Uh, for, for, for the US, we produced, uh, oh, what was it, around about 7,000. And how have sales that, been? Sorry? How have the sales been? Uh, they I think that they're more or less sold out now. So, yeah. <clears throat> and it was anticipated with with uh, with great news because it's it's a tobacco that you normally don't find. It's it's, it's you don't go to a tobacco shop and say I, I like a tobacco with rustica. There was only this one. Um, but in in Europe, it will be it will be on the market as uh, within our standard program in in the HH line. But for the US, we have. Um, we have a little bit challenge with your FDA that um, have to be approved and, and I don't know, it's going to take years to get it approved and, and so on. So uh, we just quickly went for the 7,000 cents and then it's limited for, for the United States. And, and I'm, I'm sorry to say that, but that's the facts. I'm sorry to hear it too, brother. <laughs> yeah. um, Alfredo, go ahead and jump in, bro. Uh, yes, uh, per, uh, I have a question. Uh, I remember a blend named only. 
uh, that Mavarin uh, had in the 90s. What happened oh. with that blend? It was experimentation or no. uh, it's only sugar, I, <laughs> I remember. Huh? It's, no. a, it's a very, very, very good blend. Huh? That was um, well, that blend. Yeah, that was the marketing um, marketing boss at that time from McBaron, who decided um, we need a blend that is uh, all natural. So it was the blend was okay. called only, to, yeah, only tobacco, and it was only added mm -hmm. a little bit sugar because you need sugar to to bind humidity. If you don't have sugar, uh, the tobacco dries out within two weeks even if it's sealed in a pouch. Um, and what what they did in production, that was way before my time, they humidified it too much. So it's actually more or less molded in, in the most of the pouches. And then it was decided, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to kill it. it. It's not going to work. But that, that was actually mm, okay. the first tobacco in, in shall we say, without flavors. They were just too yes, yes, I remember. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> and okay. an idea can be Thanks. fantastic, but if you're, th you're three years too soon, it, it won't work. So it's also a matter of, of where are we in, in, in the times? Are we going more for natural or more for aromatic? And that now I'm coming back to, to the other question. That, that we have been making a lot of natural uh, tobaccos. Uh, now we are going a little bit more for the sweet. Okay. okay a historical question for you. Oh. Yeah. When you made uh, pipes, did you make any pokers? Mm. No. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 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 that no. That sorry. That's not. That's not true. Um, my father developed a poker, and I have to admit, it was the ugliest one I have ever seen. So it, it was never a success. <laughs> so it, it was discontinued immediately. We, we, we couldn't make progress, no. Thank you. Boris the Piper from Finland. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead, Boris. I, I can hear, yeah. Uh, I'd like to thank you for all the HF line. They have been uh, all the really good blends, but especially from uh, the, bringing the Rastika. Uh, it's a bit of nostalgic tobacco for me because uh, I know that my grandfather smoked that uh, uh, during the Second World War and uh, years after that when the Rastika got it a revival here in Finland. So yeah. I can now say that I have smoked the same tobacco. <laughs> I'm, sure that, uh, I'm sure that he uh, that tobacco didn't taste this good as this one, but uh, anyway, uh, it was a cultural uh, uh, thing to, to bring uh, Rastika back. So, yeah. thank you. And, 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 and thank you for, for, for taking, taking the Rastika in. Um, I, I have to admit, I was two days be before it was launched in the in, in United States, um, my heart started beating a bit because I had no idea how it was going to be received. I had no idea. I'd only tried it on six people and out of these six people, the three of them uh, look like they have been drinking uh, a box of beer, a case of <laughs> beer. And the other three, they loved it. So I knew 50% is going in for it and 50% is not going to like it. So um, I can only say when we, um, when we even got to Finland, then we have made an achievement. Yeah, uh, um, it's, not, I, I, uh, it's not on sale in Finland, so I, I got mine from Germany, but uh, anyways, yeah. I, I, I could get, get a deal uh, of that tobacco. So. Yeah. We have um, Emil over there on, on uh, the YouTube channel, who's been um, Following along as best he could, he says that English isn't his best language, but he did um, write in in French and then I had to go translate that he loves the Rustica and he calls it a nicotine bomb. So, but I'm, I'm taking that as something that he, that he likes. 
<laughs> yeah, and he is one of the three guys who loved it. He's one but of the three I also, <laughs> Yeah, I also heard from, from others who say, uh, taste is good as long as I can smoke it. And then after a few minutes, they have to put it down because it's, it's getting too strong. So we have a question over here on um, uh, on YouTube. I want to make sure that these guys know we're asking these questions from Dorset Piper, and he is, I, th I think he's trying to retire you early um, because he says, "What are your plans for passing the torch when you decide to take it easy?" Ah. <sighs> You mean something like an apprentice? I guess, um, yeah. What, maybe from a corporate level, but being a bit more um, business oriented here. So uh, every good executive uh, thinks of a succession when they are nearing retirement. Have, have you gone in that direction yet? No. Nope. Gotcha. No. Nope. Um, and, and, and I think it's, it, well, not, not, not because I'm, I'm a smart person, but my job is very difficult to step into mm -hmm. because you need, you need the, the, the background from the pipes and combine it with the knowledge of the tobacco. Mm. Uh, and that, that's a complete other uh, question about which pipe for which tobacco and so on, but, but let's keep it for, for another discussion. Uh, but you have to find somebody who breathes tobacco. Not, not just, yeah, it's a job. Because if it's just a job, I can say one thing, forget it. You need the passion, you, 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 you need to, to get under the surface of the tobacco and feel it. What, what, what's it like? It has to be what are the, the nuances and, and the taste? And, and Yeah, and if you don't do that, uh, then it's just another job then I would suggest they are concentrating on their Excel tables and, and, and doing stuff like that. But but don't go into tobacco. And quite frankly, I don't know what my company, uh, what they're thinking about if they want to replace me. Well, I would probably be the last person that they would sell. I can imagine, but, but who knows? Let's pray. Let's pray they keep you forever, man. Uh, well, I can promise you I won't be around for forever. <laughs> but uh, any cheers guys cheers cheers yes god bless i have a, a more technical question uh when i yes. blend tobaccos from the whole leaf i usually spray it with a hexosan solution of calcium propionate which is food grade antifungal uh, what do you do to prevent mold from growing on tobacco? Uh, do you add anything or just uh, uh, control uh, moisture? Yeah, um, and, and that's a question I, I, I get very often. Um, what we are using in tobacco is all food approved. It means if you don't find it in tobacco, you can find it in your local supermarket, really? in a sausage or in something else. And it's not food approved according to the Danish law, but it's according to the German law. And they are a little bit more hard on what is allowed to be used in tobacco. Uh, in the HH line, we have, um, we have tried to make it like the English purity law, meaning there is only a very short list of ingredients that you are allowed to put into tobacco. And the preservative there is vinegar, which some of you probably have, have smelled when, when you open it in. Uh, yeah. The vinegar note is, is, is a little bit more heavy uh, and then it fades out. But vinegar is uh, what, um, what we're using in, in the HH. Yeah, well, I'm also using uh, food grade the preservative calcium propionate, which usually used in bacon. So, and uh, even uh, when burning, it doesn't create any harmful chemical. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. So, and there's all, always a little bit preservative in, uh, in tobacco because otherwise it will mold. So, yeah. Yeah. 
I encountered that problem myself in uh, like early stages of uh, tobacco blending from the whole leaf. And then uh, Tadzi Johnson, uh, who's owner of uh, uh, John Cotton Blends, uh, War Horse, uh, Bengal Slices, he bought those names. Actually, I learned it from him. He uses custom propane that why yeah. I started using it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and it, it's it's no big big secret, <coughs> and that is um, the the problem is always when when you pronounce it, it sounds extremely chemical. But then I always say try to pronounce the chemical formula for for normal salt. Yeah, or even for water. <laughs> oh, for water, yeah, and then, then you're getting into to chemicals as well. And of course, we are using H two O two O in the tobacco. Well, I have a master's degree in organic chemistry, so for me, it's not a problem. <laughs> no, 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 no. Chair, I have a question. Yeah, uh, um, I'm sorry, uh, David. Uh, Park York, uh, short question: Do we have a chance to see? Uh, I, I written, uh, I had written it to you, but I, I, I think it would be interesting for all. Do we have a chance to see some kind of limited uh, series like uh, Peterson and Larson do, like Christmas collection, uh, annual uh, tobacco issues, or something like that, from McBaron? Yes. You will have, um, it will probably be in the future. That's that's all I can say about it. Okay, thank you. At least we have a hope. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Bro, I wanted to ask about the, um, the, um, the uh, Restica. Yep. Um, if you, I, ha I haven't tried it yet, but I would like to try it. But the thing I'm worried about is the nicotine hit. If you sip on it, will it, will it still give you such a big nicotine hit from, from no, smoking no. it? If you if you just sip it, you know, real slow. If you're using a, a, if you're using a small a small yeah, and a smaller ball, uh, so you don't load up the pipe with too much uh, tobacco, and just sip it, then then you should you should be fine. Good, good. Yeah, well, if you smoke, yeah, really if you smoke pure nicotiana rustica, not in blend, but pure nicotiana rustica, it will hit you with the nicotine no matter what. Yes. yes. But in the blend, in properly balanced blend, it will be perfectly fine. <laughs> wow. I, as a, Peter, as a not to the level of a, of a aficionado like William is, or an expert in, in tasting and blend, I found that Rustica, the, the McBaron Rustica was so well balanced that it didn't hit me like a, a big, you know, punch in the face. It, it, it sort of crept up on me a bit. And by the time I could feel it, I, I was well able to make a choice of like, okay, that's enough. Mm -hmm. you know, I could put it down. It didn't overwhelm me in any way. I, f I found it very tasty. Now that's just one man's experience with it, right? But right. I would I would recommend it to anybody to try. Okay. I I have two slices uh, in my pipe right now. Yeah. Um, Pear, I have a, a a question that I don't know if you can answer this or or it's something you want to answer, but I thought I would ask it anyway. So we have a lot of guys in the club who are from South Africa, and mm -hmm. right now South Africa is on a, such a lockdown that they're not able to get out to. Um, brick and mortar stores to buy tobacco or alcohol, and they're not able to order online to ship. So there's obviously local politics involved, but from a corporate point of view, what are your thoughts or strategies about trying to solve a problem like that? You have a whole country of pipe smokers who are not able to get tobacco right now. How do you, how do you, how do you worm it in? You know what I'm asking there, and yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say I cannot do anything. If I could, I would uh, probably send some uh, Hercules airplanes in and uh, drop the tobacco down by parachute. And then, of course, we need to know where the pipe smokers are. Uh, I read about the situation as well, and it must be very, very hard to live in a country like that where it's so locked down. 
because normally you, you can have the, the mail running. So you could order online or, or something like that. But you can see, take a country like, like Italy. Um, they have been completely locked down. And the only shops that was able or allowed to, to keep open, that was uh, pharmacies, supermarkets, and tobacconists. Wow. So uh, it was, it the was Italians- the they, in Russia, by the way. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and they know people want to have their tobacco, otherwise they have riots. So um, that a, a whole country is closing down. I think that might have something to do with other things as well. And Actually, not only Corona. Sorry to interrupt. Actually, I'm from Spain, even though I live in the States, but uh, in Spain and Italy, the uh, tobacco shops were actually open. Not only at the mm -hmm. supermarkets, because they did, uh, it's not like in the States that you can buy tobacco at the supermarkets. So nope. in order nope. to avoid the riot, they open in both countries and many other ones in Europe as well. But yep. you only had a chance to go maybe um, once a week or there was a big line of 20 people and things like that. But both tobacco shops were open. Wow. Yeah. And that, that, was, that was extremely wise. Germany, a lot of the tobacconists have been closed during Corona, but they have a, a functioning um, internet sales. So that was no problem. United States, you have no problems if, if uh, something locks down you can order via the internet. I don't know yes. if it was that, but that the was thing is, You cannot buy online, neither Italy or France or Europe or other countries. That's not an option. So that's the reason why they kept them open. Yeah. Yes, we've been uh, pretty fortunate in the United States. Uh, most tobacconists, even if shops are closed, uh, they allowed uh, curbside pickup or offer deliveries and also uh, internet sales. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't imagine the day where the pipe smoker will uh, will sit back in his chair, uh, look at his empty pipe and nothing to fill into it. Wow. That must be why in, in the States, uh, people are selling so much, buying so much tobacco, putting it into the cellar. Mm -hmm. So they have for the next 20 years. Yeah, I probably have enough tobacco for the rest of my life. I have uh, about 100 tins uh, of tobacco and uh, about 10 pounds of bulk tobacco, not counting the whole leaf. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this is a question I was going to save for later, but it seems like um, maybe an and by the way, I just, this is the way my, my mind works. Um, and I, I don't know that it reflects what the interest of the rest of the guys in the club at all. But if, if I was looking at this from a, a product development standpoint or corporate standpoint, what we have is a branding problem that, um, you know, to grow an industry that has uh, so much of an attachment to past images and past um, associations, you know, throughout the 60s, 70s, and 80s in the United States when um, tobacco, and I think in some ways justifiably so, was really thought of as a health risk and, and whatnot. Um, so we have a bad brand. You know, tobacco itself is, is not a popular brand itself. So pipe smoking needs a new branding. You're going to grow, you know, grow your, your market. You know what I'm saying? So like, what, <laughs> what have you thought of in terms of like, if we want a bigger market. We have to have a, we have, have to have new brand of what pipe smoking means. Hmm. <laughs> that's, 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 that's a very tough question because, um, I would say every tobacco company have been trying to, to solve this problem. Um, and the problem with pipe smoking, with cigarettes, uh, it's, it's, it's very easy. You light it, you smoke it. 
but with pipe smoking, you, you, you need to learn how to fill it, how to keep it lit, uh, how to keep it going uh, until you get to the phase where you can sit down and enjoy it. And, and today in this very quick world, I think a lot of people um, don't want to take the, that time because today time is the most important to people. Um, and you need to take a lot of your time and say, this I devote to pipe smoking. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is only um, that's only a group of people and I normally say it's it's the wise people who, who chose to, to smoke a pipe um, but there is some truth about it because you have to, to you have to rest in yourself mm -hmm. if, you, if you don't rest in yourself uh, you'll have problems um, smoking a pipe if you're stressed it's important it's in, in, impossible to smoke a pipe. You know, at least you won't enjoy it. Uh, so you need inner peace. Or you can use it for sitting down after work or after a day and, and, and turn all the problems. Put them into these small boxes and, and put them in the storage. And then clear your mind of that way. What, what, was, uh, what was the saying? Uh, a pipe is gives um, the wise man time to think mm. and the stupid man something to put in his mouth. <laughs> and that was a that was a theme that came up in Father the Flame um, over and over. And, you know, I was in Montana not too long ago and uh, a big popular craze amongst millennials is fly fishing. Uh, mm. And a lot like a lot like pipe smoking, you just don't pick it up and do it. Uh, and, and I was and that was back to my earlier question about demand. I'm, I'm hoping that the millennials pick up on that. You know, they want to they want to abandon the past, kind of like where we are at in COVID right now. Uh, a lot of people don't want to go back to normal because normal was killing us. Uh, and, and now people have a chance to unplug, relax and I get maybe five, six hours alone with my pipe on the porch uh, for some quality mindfulness where, you know, um, it's healthy for my head. You know, it, it might be bad for my, it's not like cigarettes. It's not like pipe tobacco. It's, or, or uh, cigar tobacco. It's, it's different. It and it's, it's smoked at a much lower temperature which is less carcinogenic. Uh, and for me personally, and I, I'm a lifelong smoker, um, uh, the, the benefits outweigh the risks for me. Yeah. I agree. That, 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 is, that is one thing that I'm never taking into consideration when you're talking about smoking is bad. What about uh, the psychological aspect of pipe smoking? You have a cigarette well, that, and, and you can smoke that in stress, but never a pipe, mm -hmm. never a pipe. Never. <laughs> never. It's so uh, many uh, One English chemist once said, difference between uh, medicine and poison is a dose. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's I that's believe, my... I believe it, it really helps if even if you have high blood pressure, if you smoke a pipe, I believe that that calms you down when you when you're smoking your your complexing thinking you know and it kind of puts you in a relaxing mood and yeah. I enjoy even just you know lighting the pipe all of those little nuances that we do to you know lighting the pipe to packing the pipe. All of that plays a big part, and I enjoy doing it. I just, you know, I take, I get, I get my pipe. I take my time. I pick my pipe, pick my tobacco that I'm going to smoke, and it's just, you know, you take your time, and it's just, uh, you know, everything like fits together, you know, yeah. and I enjoy it. Well, it's that's very my brother. To me, my. My brother-in-law is a, he takes type A to an absolute extreme, but he's a big cigar smoker. And he explained it to me. He's like, it's the one time that I sit down for 45 minutes 
and don't do something. And I, it's the same for me with my pipe. It's like, I just sit back, I relax. My wife, my wife will look at me and she's like, well, it's a beautiful day. Just go sit, relax. I, I don't need anything from you right now. And I can, last night I sat with a friend of mine who's usually on here. I don't think he's on today. Um, and we talked about the complexities of the world, try to solve world problems last night while we were smoking our pipes. So yeah, agreed a hundred percent, Peter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, just I don't have uh, uh, just a uh, preview. <laughs> gentlemen, double, next double week we're going to meet double. and solve the world's problems. That's what we're gonna. That's our theme for next week. <laughs> and then I would suggest, then I would suggest everybody bring a big case of beer. <laughs> we're going to need that. <laughs> but David, what uh, now? Now my product development brain is, is, is start moving. Wouldn't it be something for you to, uh, to make a program, Tai Chi for uh, pipe smokers? <laughs> well, you can... a, there is a tradition behind this. You know, a lot of the things that I think about um, are trying to capture what is, um, what is a common theme through history, right? So uh, and tea, for example, I know a lot of guys in this group here have, have told me that they love to drink tea and tea is associated with tai chi and it's a rich mm -hmm. it, there has a ritualistic aspect that has a a, a um a flavor a look an aroma many many similarities with you know pipe tobacco and pipe smoking and to combine a an, an indisputable positive th this is my thing so the, the, the science behind Tai Chi is that there is no known contraindications or side effects that are negative about Tai Chi. Anybody can do it. It will be good for you. And to combine that with something that has, has been avoided because of the fear that it might be bad for you, mm. but then put it with this association of like, it's going to be good for you. Sit down, smoke a pipe, get up. Do some Tai Chi, sit back down, smoke some more pipe. <laughs> I was more thinking uh, doing both at the same time. That's, that should be possible. My, my only fear is it'll pop out of my mouth and then I, you know, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've seen uh, all the, the movements. Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. But, but we, were, we were talking uh, earlier uh, about the preservatives that McBaron used. I think I have one of the best they ever came up with. 30 year old Scotch whiskey. Oh. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, that is nice. Yeah, that, that's, and uh, even in the HH line, we had the, uh, the Highland blend. Um, and that also had uh, Glen Farkless. And, and, and you know, when, when we added that to the tobacco, we always use three men. The one was unscrewing it, the second was keeping it into the tobacco, and the third one was controlling that the first two wasn't drinking it. So, yeah, that's uh, the damage of working with, uh, with whiskey. I can see well, then, uh, some light at the end of the tunnel, because uh, uh, in Finland we have a pipe smoker Facebook group, and I'm 52 and I'm by for the oldest. The young people, they are uh, people who like uh, uh, different uh, uh, small uh, uh, um, uh, roasteries, coffee and uh, whiskeys, and uh, many of them smoke cigars too, but uh, people who, who are tasty, uh, looking for a different taste, and they are interested uh, especially from, uh, from uh, Good tobaccos, not over the counter blends. So mm -hmm. there is some hope. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, as as mentioned, I'm I'm so happy that that younger people are getting into uh, to the hobby uh, and showing yeah. a lot of interest. Yeah, they are uh, looking uh, like like eight stage blend and uh, uh, such uh, really good blends. At least here in Finland. Yeah. Yeah, that that is uh, very often get the, the the question, aromatic pipe tobaccos. Uh, do you add flavors just because it's bad tobacco you want to hide, or? And the answer is very uh, very uh, simple, 
because you cannot hide bad tobacco behind a flavor. Then you smoke it for 10 minutes, uh, the flavor is, is more or less burned, and then you are left back with, um, with bad tobacco. So no aromatic pipe tobacco is as good as quality as, for instance, the HH. They are just made in different ways. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah. I think it actually is, um, uh, for me, a, um, a, a, a new piece of information. I, I think that, um, so I'm, a, I'm both a new and an old smoker. I started, I first smoked a pipe back in the early 70s, and then I stopped for a long, long time. And then I'm in the last five years or so, I picked it back up again and wasn't paying attention during those uh, intervening years. Now, as I pay attention to the conversations that people have, there's so many people say, you know, aromatics are shit or aromatics are, are um, a lesser form of tobacco to be smoked. Implying, I think, that it's not as good tobacco itself. Not just a bad blend, but the tobacco is not so good. So this is new a piece of information for me. I'm going to talk about it for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah, what, in what, my what, what, earlier days as a pipe smoker, I smoked a lot of aromatics. Uh, then I decided it's not right for me. It's not because they bad. They are there are some amazing aromatic tobaccos. They just not right for my taste. I yeah. like tobacco flavor. Some people prefer flavored tobaccos. Uh, both are valid choices. It's just a matter of personal preference. Yeah. Just, just, just to give you, a, not to bore you with, with, uh, with numbers, uh, but one number I like to, to share with you. And that is, if we say uh, pipe tobacco is 100%, then 80% of this tobacco is aromatic. And 20% is semi-aromatic or more natural. And if you look at the Facebook groups, try to, to, um, try to figure out what are people smoking? More or less everybody on the Facebook groups are smoking natural. There are very few aromatic smokers there. And I, I've, if, if, if you have the answer for that, I would very much like to hear it because I'm trying to figure it out why that is. Well, Per, I would say don't take that too literally because oftentimes what you're hearing or what you're reading. And I say this from being part of other Facebook groups and whatnot, um, those who are most vocal are not necessarily representative of the majority of the participants. No, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or it's the, the more natural smokers that have more interest in pipe smoking and more on, on social media. I, I don't know, I don't know. And it's also yeah. availability because you can get over the counter plants uh, almost everywhere. But uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, good tobacco. You uh, there's uh, only uh, at least in Finland there's only few places where you can get them. Yeah. Yeah. I have a uh, another maybe, question. Maybe I can share some of my point of view on the question uh, why aromatics tobacco are not so popular right now. Uh, in my country, uh, I'm in Malaysia, so it's very uh, hot and humid. So most of the pipe smokers who smoke uh, aromatics, they get tongue bites because the bowl is getting too hot. So uh, me, myself, I, I have been teaching people how to smoke pipe cooler and better for the past five years. And uh, one of my... Uh, uh, you know, uh, what I recommend is them to try non-aromatics because to me, non-aromatics are less hot burning than aromatics. Me, myself, I cannot smoke any aromatics at all. I will get tongue bite. Uh, even okay, how yeah. slow I smoke it, I will still get a tongue bite. So maybe yeah. that is why uh, since um, uh, people are trying to, wanting to uh, enjoy pipe smoking more, they want to smoke something that is cooler, that is not uh, burning their uh, tongue. That's why they are moving to non-aromatics, maybe. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, actually, yeah. environment uh, affects uh, your perception of uh, tobacco a lot. Well, like as you mentioned, Malaysia and the uh, Malay archipelago in general are always uh, critic. Uh, the clove flavored cigarettes were very popular there. Mm. But if you smoke them in a cool, dry climate, they taste horrible. If I smoke them on a hot, humid New York day, I enjoy them a lot. In the winter, yeah. I cannot smoke them. <laughs> you, you, you don't have to tell me because I was involved in uh, product development, uh, Kretek, uh, fine cut for, um, per, uh, for Malaysia. Per, I have a question. Uh, what about uh, organic tobacco? Because uh, we have a, a wave of organic tobaccos uh, at the Madbaran portfolio in the future. Is it a blend with organic tobacco? Yeah, we, we have um, we have been trying that with uh, with fine cut from with organic tobacco. Uh, okay. It wasn't that that big a success. Um, with pipe tobacco, could be, could be, but it's very I very. Think, I think I think to, to the, the, the the future the organic tobacco because uh, everything is going organic and the tobacco could be. I don't know. How, yeah, yeah. How, but how do you define organic tobacco, though? What does that What does that mean? It means it's grown without uh, using any pesticides. Exactly. Uh, no use or very limited use of uh, mineral fertilizer, which means you get less uh, crop from the same field, but it doesn't really give you any benefits. It just uh, but, but, but it uh, has but it has now. a little a little a little better flower if you uh, smoke a uh, rough okay uh, I try it and it's different very different with the flavor yeah uh, actually I uh, used uh, some of uh, well I smoked some of organically grown tobacco I bought from uh, leaf only for leaf tobacco yes it's a very good tobacco leaves usually smaller in size compared to the same kind of tobacco using uh, modern agricultural methods but uh, difference is not that big just take them one time right and again if you want to produce a no, no. crop, no, you don't know just the have no to problem. use uh, uh, fertilizers and you uh, have to use pesticides and fungicides Otherwise, uh, like a virus, uh, a lot of tobaccos are susceptible to virus, like tobacco mosaic, uh, susceptible to uh, a lot of uh, fungal diseases, and uh, a lot of insects eat tobacco. <laughs> Hey, I agree. I agree with Mitri. Uh, I also bought uh, uh, leaves uh, from different manufacturers in Russia, and I took uh, some uh, so-called organic. The leaves are smaller. Uh, the nicotine is a little less, uh, but the difference is uh, isn't much, actually. I I, I use my own mixes uh, for everyday. Uh, Smoking, and I can say that, uh, that I, I, I can't found uh, the big difference between uh, both tobaccos at all. Uh, I, uh, I only can say about Virginia, however, but because I didn't, uh, I didn't buy uh, other source of uh, organic. I see the uh, um, who has their name S S twenty seven. So I'm, I'm assuming that that's not your real name unless you're a robot, but um, <laughs> go ahead, brother, ask your question. You're gonna have to turn your own mic on though. Hi there, I'm Said, I'm from Iran and my name, my nickname is S27 because I'm a little bit gamer geek and I use this code for my gamer name. So I want to tell something. I really love and enjoy aromatic tobacco. And I believe when you want to enjoy aromatic tobacco, such as Hallberg, 
I believe you must smoke very, very much slower than a normal tobacco, than a natural tobacco, because they have a lot of sugar. So I recommend to my friend who want to smoke aromatic tobacco, use a church warden, because you have better and cooler smoke. When you use, mm -hmm. when you, when your heat is much high, you're nothing testing, only you got tone bite. I believe someone who want to smoke aromatic tobacco, they must use the very, very, a little bit light of heat. Sorry, my bad language. I no, 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 that's that's okay. And, 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 and you're, you're quite right. Uh, normally, aromatic tobaccos per se will be more a little bit more bitey than natural tobaccos, because you are adding uh, flavors to the tobacco, and some of them, if if you don't take care, um, they work against each other, and that will you will feel that on your tongue. They will start bite you a bit. Uh, if you smoke natural tobacco, you won't have that problem. Mm. In talking about uh, a flavored tobacco, I had something to share that I bought a week ago. Uh, this is a local produce from India, uh, the state of Bengal. Uh, now, most of the tobaccos that are flavored are usually sweet, but this one smells and tastes like amchur. Uh, now, you must be wondering what is amchur? The kind of spice produced here in India. So what basically you do is you uh, take unripe green mangoes, you dry it for two to three months, and you may add some more spices to it for your liking, and then you grind it to fine powder for garnishing on dishes. Uh, I'm not sure if you would be able to see this or not. It's a fine cut. I bought it last week. It also exactly tastes like that spice. Uh, it's very moist. I'm not sure if any one of you have had anything like this. I'm very excited and I'm, I actually bought this because uh, stocks are running out uh, here in India. Uh, imports uh, have diminished since the coronavirus pandemic broke out. Uh, and uh, I just asked the retailer, is there anything which is not sweet? Uh, I actually meant to convey that I wanted something which is straight tobacco. They sent me this, which is spiced up. So, have any of you had uh, any of tobacco which is this spiced up? Like, this is a typical spice produced in India and tastes and smells exactly like that. It's called Amjo. If you would like to Google or. Amjo, yeah. <laughs> can, uh, yeah. Ben, can, can you post a picture of that on the uh, Facebook group to see if we can find it somewhere? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. I would. Yeah, I also want to add there is some uh, amazing Virginia tobaccos grown in India. German company HU uh, makes uh, wonderful Virginia blends, and they use uh, Virginia tobaccos mostly from India and Philippines. Yeah, it, it comes from the state of Bengal and some from Mysore. I think even Dan Tobacco uses some of Virginia from Mysore, I guess. I'm not very sure. And, and even McBaron use Virginias out of India. <laughs> and Pat, and I, um, I, ha I have a question here um, where we... Sure, sure, come. Sorry, Per, can I ask a question? Just the, the, the aromatics v. English blends, a uh, sort of big question. W would you uh, ever sort of give recommendations because there's been a mention there of different uh, pipe types that might suit different tobaccos? Uh, I will pass on what I learned from my father. And he said, the more rough, the bigger the tobacco is cut, the bigger the pipe should be. And the smaller cut, the smaller pipe. And I know with, with uh, you, you have all this, this is for a flake pipe. Well, flake is very thin cut. It, it, it requires, in my my world, a smaller pipe, uh, a broad cut mixture could take a very large pipe. So uh, that's that's uh, the th the 
the rule that I'm living after. Okay, thanks. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, Phil, that's a great question. I have a question for uh, you. I, uh, I want to add a little bit to that, uh, also dependent on type of tobacco. Uh, as a general rule, for straight Virginias, I prefer small to medium pipes. For English tobaccos, I prefer larger pipes. It just seems uh, to give more balanced smoke. But cut mm -hmm. is also very important. I totally agree. Fine cut usually requires smaller pipes. Here, I have okay. a question for you from your um, time at McBaron. Uh, and I think you alluded to it a little bit with um, your comments on some experiments that didn't work out so well. But I'm wondering uh, if you have any personal reg regrets about you know, a, a blend that you might have made or, a, or something like that. And it's like, ah, oh, I really shouldn't have done, done that one. Do you have any, any regrets on that, uh, of any stories like that? I have a few, but but my, my biggest regret uh, was that I and that was not the company that was me delisting um, the Highland Blend and the Mature Virginia in the HH line. Because first came the Vincent Syrian, then came the Acadian Parik, and then came Mature Virginia, and we had uh, the Highland Blend, and then I realized. This HH line is going to be a line of tobacco without top flavor. So Highland Blend has whiskey as top flavor. Uh, the Mature Virginia had a red wine balsamico as top flavor. So they didn't fit into the pattern. So those two I had to delist to, to create the HH line for what it is, tobaccos without top flavor. And, and if any of you have been smoking those tobaccos and are a little bit angry that they don't exist anymore, then um, direct your anger at me. I, I was the bad guy. And well, of course, I have, course I have, have to make tough choices. It's totally understandable. Well, yeah. But, but my, my saying is also, you have to get the thought in your mind before you can think it. And until that moment, I didn't have that thought in my mind. But when it came, it was clear, I have to deal with those two. I have a question. How did that gunpowder blend work out? The gunpowder? Uh, <laughs> what, what, One what, you what might have mean? regretted. <laughs> well, the gunpowder uh, blend that turned into chew bags for oral <laughs> use. No, um, that was actually where where the idea came with um, with the Rustica, because we we open up uh, production of of chew bags and and the tobacco we are using is Rustica because they need a nicotine punch. So uh, we we took some of the. Uh, this rustica and that was um, it was not like the original one just air dried it was um, it was uh, sun dried so it contained a little bit of sugar and actually now we talked about India <coughs> we, uh, we source um, the rustica out of India they have some tremendous good qualities S27, if that was my, my gamer bro. Um, go ahead and jump in with your question. Do you have a, a special challenge in Middle East, such as Iran and Turkey? We have a, some tobacco we call fake tobacco. Some people believe the producer, the tobacco is not the producer, is not on the market. Some people make it at the some illegal company and release it for selling the with high price. Is that true or you think is just a rumor or gossip news? I have, I have come upon uh, a couple of copies um, from Iran, I don't think, but from China. Uh, we found a, a pouch of original choice 
and the, the pouch was looking identical. But when you open it, we could see immediately that has nothing to do with us. So that was a local tobacconist or, or, or tobacco factory who made a copy of that and was selling it um, at premium price. But it was not premium tobacco. So, so yes, it, it exists. We, yeah, we just... same way as uh, they make uh, fake Cuban cigars actually in Cuba. Uh, most yeah. uh, counterfeit Cuban cigars uh, produced in Cuba, they just use inferior tobacco and uh, they don't taste anything like the brand it's advertised. Yeah. But, but All right, it's, gentlemen, it's... This, is, this is the time of, the, of our meeting when I just want to... Um, let everybody know that we're heading towards the two hour mark. And um, this is really the hard part for me because I would just go on all afternoon, but I, I know that I don't want to get anybody in trouble with their wives and family. So um, we're not there yet, but we got about another 15 minutes or so. If you've got questions that you've been holding on to, or you want to, you know, go off the wall and ask pair something completely, um, unrelated or, or whatever, it's your group. Uh, but now's the time to ask those questions. Okay, so I, I, okay. I, I, I'm, I'm going to go off. for the test afterwards. Then. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go off base here and, and say that if ever you think about um, a, a, a malt, a Scotch malt, malt whiskey uh, top on something that maybe won't fit the HH brand, you know, but a, a Scottish blend, if you like, let me know because uh, I know the master blender of uh, Coal Isle, which is on Isla, uh, probably the, the home uh, uh, malt whiskey. Noted. Yep, it's noted. <laughs> Pear, do you I'll have questions for us? For the, you've got, a, you've got a, um, a focus group here. What what would you like to know from us? I have one question I would like to ask. How did you start to smoke a pipe? Why? I'll go there. I've I've told this to people. I've 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 mentioned it. Um, it was very bizarre. Um, I was a lifelong cigarette smoker. Um, and I went to cigars to get off of the cigarettes. Uh, the cigars were very expensive. Once I got married, um, the cigars didn't go, the smell, the cost, and I didn't have a fix. And I don't know what, I woke up one morning, literally, I woke up and it, it just pipe tobacco, pipes. Uh, Jack Lundy, in Palo Alto, California, 1965, when I was four years old. Within three hours of waking up that morning, I owned my very first pipe. It was a, a, a Peterson Donegal Rocky, which is still in my rotation. Uh, I bought it at Mission Pipe Shop in downtown San Jose, California. Um, and the rest, as they say, is, is, is history. Um, it was a very steep learning curve because I, I didn't, know, there's nobody here that smokes a pipe. So I didn't know any of the rituals. I didn't know, you know, cadence and pacing and all. I didn't know the different, I started out with aromatics, uh, a lot of tongue bite. Um, but at, after a while, uh, I, reading a, a lot of reviews and doing a lot of research and, um, it's been fantastic. And I got to say the HH line, it, it, it just, you know, my favorites, it's like, you know, the, uh, the bold Kentucky uh, was listed as the strongest in the line. And I, mm -hmm. I, I've never gotten into ropes or any of the, the, I know there are other tobaccos out there with a lot more nicotine, but as soon as I saw the Rustica, you know, I said, I got to get me some of this. Um, so, you know, I'm not a hoarder, but I did snap up, you know, five tins, which will last me, I'm sure a long time, but, uh, um, man, and for the cost, you know, I used to buy these, uh, cigars, the, um, oh God, the name escapes me, I, but, you know, dropping 20 bucks or $30 on a stick and for, you know, $30, I buy, you know, 
enough tobacco to last me a year uh, as opposed to, you know, a, a, a 40 minute cigar for 30 bucks. So oh. um, it, it's, it, it, and it, like I said, it's just uh, the, the, the pleasure, the satisfaction I derive from enjoying the pipe and contemplating and just unplugging, getting off the grid. And, and it, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a, and I'm new to this. I've only been doing this for seven years. That's how that started. Yeah, thank you. Well, yeah, at the my... time I was a cigar and cigarette smoker in 1994, my landlady had old pipe in the house. She gave it to me. I gave it a try and I enjoyed it. And then I bought a few more pipes, started uh, trying different tobaccos. And finally, I even started blending my own tobaccos. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. I, uh, um, for, I... me, for, for, uh, for me, I, uh, it was uh, only, only, only curiosity. Uh, I started uh, 26 years ago uh, when I was 17 years. I start with a pipe that my father had in his own bar. Uh, I stole the pipe and start to smoke a pipe because uh, I'm from Guayaquil, Ecuador. Uh, I think that I'm the only people that smoke pipe here. Uh, at Quito, uh, Ecuador, uh, we have uh, uh, more pipe smokers, but, but here in my city, uh, I think that I'm the only or the only we have five or 10 people that smoke pipe, no more. Uh, it's, a, it's a city with 3 million of persons live here. But uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good experience because uh, I start to uh, know anything about pipes. Um, uh, I start with the, with the, with the Barcelona uh, Pipa Club of Spain, the Virtual Pipe Club of Spain, uh, the, the Barcelona Pipe Club. And we started the internet and learn and learn and learn every day and um, now i have 43 years and i think that i can smoke a uh, 45 or 50 years more pipes it's a lifestyle it is it's a lifestyle mm. yeah. about me uh, i came i came uh, to pipe tobacco trying to drop out the paper from my lungs uh, so i i smoked fine cut uh in uh, self made cigarettes and uh, then uh, uh dutch tobacco samsung and so on uh disappeared from our market uh, and all we had is uh, German uh, with a very bad uh, quality paper. I didn't smoke cigarettes at all. So I dropped out uh, the cigarettes, and can, but uh, fine, cut from, uh, uh, f fine cut in a pipe was too hot. And then I saw McBarren and uh, I tried the McBarren uh, roll cake uh, and dark twist, uh, but club blend was the best for me uh so that's the story yeah. very nice coming from the secrets i started watching a lot of old movies a few years ago and uh, what i noticed is that uh, the characters who played gentlemen in the movies everyone smoked a pipe the lawyers the doctors and that is what attracted me to the pipes uh, although there's uh, literally no one around here who smokes a pipe uh, but when I saw those movies, I, I thought, okay, I want to be that gentleman. I want to be that kind of a man. And then I started yeah. smoking the pipe. <laughs> so that was the whole idea of starting with pipes. Uh, but I was an ex, uh, I am an ex uh, cigarette smoker. I quit cigarettes and I just got into pipes. And most of the time I'm working from home and I always have a pipe sticking uh, to my mouth. Even if it's not burning, I just have it in my mouth somehow. I just like the whole the whole idea of having a pipe with you all the time. Yeah, don't say that around my wife. She's a psychotherapist <laughs> and she will um, read into a, a whole lot about that. So don't, don't, don't say that around her. <laughs> Actually, I was gonna share my, my first, when I first uh, started smoking a pipe back in the 70s, and it, it's not that different from what Shibin is, is sharing. I picked up a pipe because I saw 
television commercials from Bork and Riff. And I don't know if you guys remember those old 70s cigarette commercials. Some Viking looking guy comes into the house and there's this beautiful woman who is filling his pipe and lighting it up for him and then sticking it in his mouth. And I thought, if the pipe comes with the beautiful woman, then I'm smoking it. And, and I knew that was silly, but like literally that was, that was the marketing pull that, that gave me that, that first interest in smoking a pipe. Wow, that's cool. So, so how often has your wife uh, packed your pipe and uh, brought it to you? Uh, never. <laughs> <laughs> but she did try um, some, some tobacco um, for the first time the other day. She's, we're sitting around, and she goes, so when are you going to teach me how to smoke a pipe? And I, I thought, who, who are you? I don't know this woman who's asking me this question. So I, I gave her a pipe full of H.H. Burley. And she really loved it. It was just, it was, I had done the review on the, on the Burley and, and she was like, God, after I watched your review, I want to go have a peanut butter sandwich. So I want to try this tobacco. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. My wife uh, well, also has a couple, a uh, couple of uh, pipes. One of, uh, one of them is Belgic and another one is a small church warden. So she smokes some, uh, sometimes uh, uh, some mixture of Cavendish. Yeah, occasionally my daughter smokes pipes with me. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. You know about the younger generation? I, 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 I'm 56 and started smoking a pipe uh, three months ago, okay? Just, just on lockdown uh, with COVID. And it's a strange story. I went to Wales to watch a rugby match. The rugby match, it was Scotland v England. It was cancelled. Um, I was with a guy who did smoke. And round the corner from our hotel was a, a, an old-fashioned tobacconist. And we went in, and the smell that hit my senses immediately took me back to my childhood when my mother and father, who were both smokers, uh, uh, used to take me into the tobacconists in Gala Shields in my hometown. So I bought a pipe, I bought some tobacco, and here I am three months later. The interesting thing is with the youngsters, I have two sons who have been smokers longer than me, um, who smoke cigarettes and, and others, all kind of interesting stuff. And uh, they are fascinated with me smoking the pipe and want to have a go. So you see something good. good came out of this COVID. 19 now you want to us. Oh yeah, per per I'm sorry. Uh, I would like to uh, thank you and Mac Baron Tabaka for the nuns you saved for us. Sorry for for the for the three nuns. What 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 did we save you? Uh you uh, three nuns, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's a yeah, mixture okay. I, I love and uh, I'm very grateful for it. Yeah. That's, that's okay. Thank that's you very fun. much. Well, gentlemen, it, it yeah. is now we're on that that time um, when it's time to uh, call it a, a weekend. Pear, thank you so much for being our guest today. Um, yes. I really like I've learned a ton today just by what you've shared um, more than I had anticipated. And I'm just really grateful for that. I think I speak for everybody uh, in saying that I would love to have you come back again and um, speak to us some more. And even if you just want to come and hang out, and you know, if you're if you're bored some Saturday evening and want to just come and hang out with a bunch of other pipe smokers, please, you're always welcome here. So, thank you very much, David. Uh, can can I make uh, one uh, final comment? Please do. Yeah. Absolutely, and and that is that is to all in this group and uh, also on on YouTube. Uh, whenever you come uh, across um, a man or why, uh, a woman, I I don't care, who said, "Well, I would actually like to smoke a pipe," then please do me one favor: don't make it complicated. Mm -hmm. Make it as simple as possible, and those who have the interest will turn it into a hobby and will be very dedicated and mm -hmm. the others will just smoke. Yes. But make it very, very simple at the beginning. Otherwise, you scare them away. 
and then guys thanks for having me um enjoy the rest of your your weekend it have been interesting uh, i have uh, have had a, a couple of good laughs and that's beautiful always have that in good company uh, stay safe and uh, happy smoke Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pera. Take care. My pleasure. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Be well. My be pleasure. safe. I'll see you guys next weekend. All right. Take care. Take care, Dave.